Well, hello everyone. It is Friday, December the 2nd, 2022. I am Dell Delbridge, Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. This is your status check. Now we've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that it looks like our rail strike has been averted. So we, the last thing I think we kind of needed was another disruption to our supply chain. And I think that maybe Congress, I think the House voted for everything as usual, give all of it away. And then the Senate side, I think, got the big part, but the rail unions didn't get that extra week of, of sick leave. They had apparently from a radio call in person explained, they did have paid time off. It was generic paid time off. It's less in the beginning of the career than at the end of the career, but they get paid time off and they have to use it. They can use it for sick time or vacation. Apparently they're asking for some more time strictly dedicated for sick leave. So they keep all of the vacation vacation. 24% I think is what was reported as a raise plus $5,000. Sound like a pretty good deal to me. Got that taken care of. Looks like good news. Bad news is, well, we're running out of football. Last week was rivalry week. And this week is divisional playoffs. We have right here tonight, December the 2nd, 2022, we have the Utes versus USC. And quite honestly, I'm going to go for the underdog. Go ahead and hate me now if you want, but I like to see the little guy win every now and then. Uh, Utah rated number 11. I'm going to root for the Utes. And not that I'm rooting against USC. I just want the underdog to win. The early game tomorrow. 11 o'clock game will be TCU number three. I think they are the Horn Frogs. Is that right? Check me on that. I've not really watched them. I've seen a little bit of highlight reels. And on the highlights, on the highlights, they look good. So I don't know how they're going to go against Kansas State. That's also a team I don't normally follow. Number 10, Kansas State against number three. I would say from the rating, we're going to root for Kansas State on that early game. Now our late game will be Clemson number nine against 23 North Carolina, and since Mama is an old Tar Heel, we're going to root for North Carolina, but I rather think that Dabo Sweeney is going to take care of business with North Carolina, and I think that'll be one-sided. In the mid-game, here's the rubber right here. LSU, number 14 LSU, a man in his first year coaching got him up in the SEC playoff. That's pretty darn amazing. Number 14 LSU against number one Georgia Bulldogs. I kind of think that Mr. Kirby is going to take care of Mr. Bryan's team pretty well so that may not be that exciting of a game but maybe we eat some nachos so let's say we get back to our middle segment talk about some business if you like this content please go to calldelltosell.com find the tab that says on youtube click it and it'll open up a page of qr codes there you can use a smartphone to scan and get to the youtube page or you can just mouse over and click it on a pc there you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when each Friday's blog has been uploaded. Thank you. All right, so what do we got on tap for the middle segment? Well, let's take a look at those rates that everybody stays fascinated with. We have them here for you. We have these from at courtesy of Mortgage Daily News, our friends, 30-year mortgage rates. We're looking at the fixed. And look at what good news we do have. It does look like we've started a little downward trend. Remember, we've been questioning early this year, six months ago, would we hit 7.5%, 8%? We were up here about 7.37. It certainly looked like we were going to finish that if we had another uh, three-quarter percentage point added in December. Now, we've kind of actually slid down a little bit. We've had some favorable, definite kind of maybes some we might do's from the fed chair as early as maybe december didn't say we were going to get that and then he started talking about some tapering off and leveling out and all that's just speech i think to make the markets move we don't know what they're going to do but we do know they have dropped back down we have some good opportunities here but we also see that we've dropped down once before we were back up here around june and then we dropped down here somewhere around, i think around august middle august we kind of flattened back out started going back up so we've seen temporary slides before but overall since uh beginning of 2022 uh, we've seen nothing but interest rates rise and i think it'll continue looks pretty scary doesn't it well let's just stretch this on back out I have actually criticized some people from using the, the world's co coming to an end and also those who say, well, it's no big deal. If we go back towards our famous 2008 area, when we had our housing bubble burst, we see that it was actually around 5%, not really outrageous interest rates, fives and through here, we go from 2010 to 2014 to 2015, around four. And it's not until 
really we start sliding down in the low threes and early twos that we really got ourselves into trouble. I think it's this super cheap money that helped us build some very fine looking houses that now they were at, they were that expensive because we could get cheap money. Now cheap money is gone. It's a little harder to reach that. Now I was talking with uh, KJ, president of Bond Mortgage just yesterday, as a matter of fact, and we still have a, a, the ability on conventionals to still get like a three, two, one. Now I think some FHAs are are limited to two, two, two segments, two ones. Whereas if we go conventional, if we can get you on a conventional, we can do three steps instead of two. And he was telling me that it's a great time in a, in, in a way that, well, you get if we can get the buyer the seller's concessions to fund that buy down, and some do then we might be able to get that money put in that, that uh, trust fund. And if the rates drop like some people think they do, then we'll be able to refi. And if they don't drop and they go up or even worse, then you're locked in. Either which way, you've got a, you've got a pretty good start. And you've gotten it when the inventory is beginning to flesh out a little bit. Remember how disappointed buyers were in the first half of the year? Everything is going so fast, fast, fast. And they're just like, they just give up. I'm tired. I'm t I put in contract after contract and I can't get any of them. And I keep getting outbid and cash is out, out getting my jobs for me. And I can't get a contract in and I'm just tired. I quit. Well, right now we're starting to see a little bit of that buyer uh, confident kind of go up a little bit on, on inventory. They're having struggles with the finance rate, perhaps. And then the sellers know this and they're starting to come down on their pricing just a little bit. No more, perhaps, are we seeing the $20,000 above asking. We're starting to see them come down a little bit. Now, the prices are kind of holding a little bit because if you remember a month or so ago when I did that research for you, I showed you normally it's the volume that drops dramatically and not the prices. Prices will are a lot more stable over a period of time. There's some of that is because of inflation. Some of that is emotional. If you tell somebody you have a, a Barbie doll, rare edition Barbie doll, she bought for 10 bucks and now it's worth half a million dollars and she thinks she made a half million dollars, but she never sells it. So then later on, it's worth only a quarter of a million dollars because whatever reason, so many people think, well, I've lost a quarter of a million dollars in my opportunity. No, you've gained the other quarter. Okay, but we have that emotion built into us that we feel like we're losing. So by doing a seller concession for that buy down, it's a way that the price seems to stay higher. They just paid a little bit off and it's really all money out of the same bucket. Anyway, it's all water out of the same. Well, so anyway, let's wrap this show up. Hello, I'm Del Delbert of Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you are currently unrepresented and would like to know how to compare up to three properties side by side and room by room, then go over to my new YouTube channel. Call Dell to sell. That's one L and Dell, no spaces. Watch the demo on Real Scout, and then call me, and we'll set up your exclusive ad-free account today. We have our numbers for this week, but first, as you know, we have to do last week's. Last week, 11, 25, 22, we had 19,151 in our opportunities in Real Scout system. That was down over the previous period. We had 33.68 in the under contract still showing. Also down just a tad, but the integer ratio remained at 18. In fact, it stayed at 18 for four weeks. So it's fairly stable at that. This week, 12 to 2022, we have 18,683 in the opportunities. That's down over the previous period. 3,152 in the under contract still showing. It also dipped a little bit. And finally, our ratio, our integer ratio between those two has dropped to 17%. Not phenomenal. We are going into the colder, grayer months, and we normally slow down in that period. But we do have greater opportunity for inventory. We've got some concessions beginning to be offered, and we're starting to normalize that market. Our interest rates are up, but they're temporarily, temporarily down. It might be a good time just to start getting your feet wet. You don't have to take the plunge, but you need to walk up to the edge of the pool to take a look at the water. So you need to call Dell to sell. Call Dell now.